general takeaways from you to start? Um, no, it was good to play a game. Uh, just from the standpoint, you had so many guys that have really never played college football. And for those guys uh, to go through a week of preparation and get to the point um, where they knew on game day, you could lean on that background and that experience in terms of their practice. Uh, what did you think of the energy effort from the number one defense? Good, really good. Now they're gonna, they're certainly gonna be challenged. We go forward. I mean, next week you look. I mean, that's a quarterback that was the top quarterback in the country coming out. Uh, they're out of out of high school. Was committed to A and M originally, and ended up at Sam Houston. And the the defensive stand they had after the muff punt, you know, in a game that was. Pretty lopsided. That was a pretty intense moment, it seemed. How, how beneficial is that? To you know, see? I think the, those are calls, you know, you go through, uh, especially August, you go through all those goal line calls on both sides of the ball. I've had years where uh, you might have at most seven goal line call, calls total, but you practice it 15 times every single week. Literally, those are about the numbers. And other years where you have a few more snaps. So it's good to be put in that situation and the mistakes that we made. But the good things we did, too, we'll learn from them. At the quarterback position, obviously, Zach Larry played the majority of the game. What did you, what did you see from him? Well, you know, really, again, same thing. I mean, he's really one of those guys. He hadn't played a whole lot of quarterback snaps. So for him to have an opportunity to get out there and operate, I thought the best thing he did was just run the offense. And uh, and it sounds simple. It's just that's so important from that position. He did a really, really good job that way. Make sure guys are set, knowing exactly where his motion is, the consistency of his cadence. Um, that's really relevant at quarterback. And the game experience, I mean, the pitch he had that was a little wild, like things like that, do you, do you sometimes just need to play to understand what you can and can't I think play? so. You know, he grew up, maybe he saw Jabbar, you know, and Jabbar threw sky hooks. He tried that pitch that way to the left. Not exactly what we want. <laughs> when something like that happens, do you really need to pull a guy aside and talk to him about it, or is it evident? We'll enough? learn from it. you got to teach. I mean, every single snap for each player is a teachable moment. We will make sure we, we, we digest those. And then Jared Rosnos, is that how you say Rosnos? Uh, first of all, how did he put himself in position to be out there so often with that top group? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can see it. he does. He is skilled, you know, just the run after the catch. I thought the other play that he made on our sideline was impressive, too. As the ball was slightly behind him, he caught it and then looked to get back up the field. He did have the penalty, and yet he'll get that cleaned up as we roll forward. And, uh, I mean, Really, I mean, outside of playing Coach Calhoun and ping pong, he's got it together pretty good. Is there a history there? I don't know. You'll have to ask him. Yeah. Okay. Was he one that was on the radar as a potential starting receiver early he was. in the offseason? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. I guess last year, did he see any action or what? what uh, not much. Role? Yeah, not much. And he wasn't a prep school guy either, was he? He was not. He so was this, direct. So this is the first football he's really played in about three years? It is. Yeah. Okay. And the skill set, um, I mean, you know, it, does he remind you of anybody you've had? Or does he, um, what does he that's bring? That's an interesting question because, uh, you know, he's not, you know, he's not overly tall or we've had bigger guys at that spot. You know, like Gerard was bigger. Jalen Robinette was bigger. Um, last year, obviously, David was quite a bit bigger. We just, I, I think, you know, where we are, we can't hand, we aren't going to hand pick guys in recruiting. I mean, we got to be real. We got to take the best player we can possibly get that matches at the Air Force Academy and then tailor a little bit how we operate, where they line up and how we move them. And then a lot of guys got carries. Aiden Calvert kind of stood out to me as somebody who had a little bit of a burst. Um, he does. Yours? You know, he certainly does. Um, you know, and really last year he had a carry, he had a couple carries where that was the case too. I mean, you go back and you look whether it's 100 times what we did in the spring, 40 times. I mean, he does have a top end gear. And were you aware of the whole jersey situation going on before the game? I was. Yeah, I know it's unfortunate. Yet, really credit to everybody involved, starting with Robert Morris to find a way to make that still happen. And you know what, candidly, we could do that. Anybody could do that. They're human. We're all human beings. And so nobody's above anybody else or thinking we could that that absolutely could happen. It's it's something so you know what? We we aren't almighty here. So and we realize that. Any update on Camby Goff? Not right now. No. Um, glad that it was not a knee. 
and uh, we'll just see as we go forward. Did Dane Kinnaman play at all? He did not. Would you expect to have Dane Kinnaman back returning punts when he is available? I would not. Okay. When it, well, just because I don't, I don't know when he, yeah, I don't know when he's coming back. Right. It, well, Cade Harris. He very well could. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. And another uh, running back that I want to talk about was uh, Dylan Carson. Averaged ten yards a carry. Talk a little bit about him. He's trying to look like a guy that had the same jersey as he did in his running yeah. style. You know, he he does run with an awful lot of natural forward lean. Has really really good power. He has good quickness. He has super you know supervision. Uh, you go back and look. I mean, his production in high school was absolutely sensational. And um, I can remember when I first looked at his tape, it was early January of his senior year, and Mike said, I don't know, what do you th – Mike's usually point on. He said, but you you got to make the call. And I looked at it and looked about four plays. I said, we got to go after this guy. And uh, I said, where's he from? He said, up by Alaska. He was joking, but it was way north of Seattle. And um, he uh, – yeah, he'll be interesting to watch as we go forward. And in your secondary as a whole, we'll hear from Jerome and, and PJ and Trey, their ability to get to the ball quickly, knock down some passes. How do you feel about your secondary today? Well, you know, you just the, the, the advantage of playing a game, you're going against di different receivers. And um, I think to a degree, when as much man coverage as we play or just as many one-on-ones that we do, you get in tune with, all right, when this guy starts to move my leverage this way, I know which way he's going to break. They just see him do it so many times, just day after day in practice. So you need other receivers coming at you. And I think, you know, for a guy like Jerome, who's only been at corner for four weeks, you know, things had to be moving a little quickly for him today. But it'll slow down the more he plays. And really, that's our team as a whole. I mean, we'll – we're, we're going to have a hard time going forward. We know that as a team, you know, just looking at the raw challenges that are out there. And, um, you know, I mean, we, we, we just, when it comes to matchups, you go back to high school seniors and you look at stars compared to stars for whoever that is that makes that determination. We'll have a really, really difficult go of it down the road. Yeah, Coach, I believe this is 17 straight home opener victories for you guys. Uh, what does that just say about the consistency you've been able to build with your program? It's one day, you know, and really I think I think our guys really embrace that approach. You know, I think I thought our guys were really locked in, you know, and it's kind of one of those you never know for sure, but you get a little bit of a feeling on Friday evening. And last night when we had a chance to visit with them, I thought these guys are dialed in pretty good. And uh Frankly, my biggest concern was were there some guys that hadn't played that maybe got a little spun up, you know, and just say, no, be able to lean hard on the way you practice, the way you train. And, uh, and I thought the guys did a really good job that way. What do you like specifically about Zach Larry? I know you talked about it, um, but he obviously earned the starting gig today. Um, and will we expect to see him starting again next weekend? We'll see. I mean, I thought I thought he played really solid today, and he's only going to get better. You know, we, we the one thing we're not going to do is rush to judgment. You know, I mean, goodness. You know, you can go out there and you can throw seven really good innings, one outing, and the next maybe not so much. I mean, that could happen. I'm trying to think the guy that was the number one pick in baseball this year, and he goes to double A, and golly, but he's still you can't say, all right, give him some time, let it all sort itself out. And I know your schedule gets a lot more challenging. What's the biggest thing you guys will be focused on this upcoming week? Well, what we can't focus on is the way – how difficult matchups are going to be. I mean, you just look at it again. You start looking at stars and recruiting and all that. We can't do anything about that. You know, it's not something we control. I realize coming out of high school, you know, if you went through our room, there might not be, but there's something that clearly we saw and we knew was there in our guys. And, and we really, really got to build on Air Force. And – if a guy will, if he'll lift on Monday and he'll lift throughout the week and they'll practice every day, a guy will grow and improve in our program. And so we just got to trust the, you know, trust that part of it and just know that it may not be weeks, it may not be months. In some circumstances, it might be multiple years, you know, until guys get to that point. But hang in there. I know it's a long haul. Coach Sam Houston next week. 
NRG. Any, any, any feelings about going back after you coach the Texans and all that? Any feelings about going back to NRG and all that? Well, it's, and it's an amazing facility. You know, I went to the Final Four in, uh, in April. And, I mean, the way it's been able to still hold true, I mean, the space that they have in concourses, um, the sight lines, uh, you know, for everybody that's in the stands. But, you know, obviously, I mean, our family. I mean, that's where, you know, Amanda's family's from and being able to spend that. It was an incredible year. And, uh, and yet that's not why we're going back there this Saturday. Just real quick, the first part of Brady's question, um, how, how did Zach earn this spot? What about his skill set? You know, really, we, we, we leaned that way probably about a week and a half ago, um, you know, middle of last week. And, uh, you know, that part of it was some of the top end speed you know, was an aspect of it. Um, the other thing is, I mean, there, there is something about Zach. Every person's contagious. Like we tell our guys all the time, you know what? You either add to the chemistry of a team or you're taken from it. There's no neutral. And I think you can look at Zach, any team that he's been a part of, just how he elevates others. He just has that kind of soul and that kind of character. Um, he, he's pretty unique that way. I mean, he does have juice. Uh, I think it was second drive, maybe. You broke through and got the sack. I mean, for a guy who's making his first start, and you know, first real expanded time, how important was that play to, to get in there? Um, it was pretty important. It was cool to be able to do that. But I had a lot of guys, you know, who kind of paid the way in front of me. Like I had Vince last year. You know, I took a lot after him. I had Chris last year. I took a lot after him. But it was pretty cool, you know, get the first sack of the season, you know, start the year off right, especially in my first start. Did you prove anything to yourself? Um, not really. Honestly, I kind of always felt like I was a I was a good pass rusher. I was pretty, you know, solid. I think it was I think it was good to have this be kind of like a coming out party. You know, this be my first start and kind of prove, I guess, to the world. But to me, I was always pretty confident in myself and my abilities. And how intense was in either of you can grab this that goal line stand? Because I think it was still the one defense out there, and you guys obviously wanted the shutout. Like, take me through the emotions of that. It was pretty intense. We were definitely, you know, our goal was for when the ones were out there, it was going to be a shutout. We wanted to have a shutout for the ones. You know, we wanted to have a shutout for the whole defense, but especially the ones. When we were out there, we were like, it doesn't matter how close they get. We always say, you know, our defense coach always says, like, we could put it in a parking lot. We're still going to stop them no matter how close they get. Um, we had that fumble that stopped them. Then we had a couple other stops, that sneak and a couple other things. But it was pretty intense. You know, we were just shouting at each other, shouting, each other, shouting at them, trying to get the crowd into it, you know. Jerome, to switch from safety to corner, did you really do it in the last four weeks, or was it more of a whole off-season transition? Um, I definitely only had four weeks to prepare for this, but I'm uh, just very blessed for a good coaching staff and teammates around me to, to believe in me. And yeah, yeah, only four weeks, but uh, taking it brick by brick. What kind of a crash course is that? I mean, how much work outside of practice are you doing just to prepare yourself and change an entire mindset? Um, Definitely a whole lot of film, uh, working on technique for sure. Uh, yeah, that's about it. When they approached you with it, did you have any idea you would be a starter? Or were you thinking this is a career setback because now you got to learn a new position and go back on the down on the depth chart? Um, I played corner in high school for about two years. So um, still a work in progress, getting back to corner. But uh, yeah. <laughs> how, how different was the game situation versus practice at that spot? It was very different, um, focusing on just one man instead of the entire defense, for sure. So I guess my eyes were too big, especially today, um, you know, not focusing on my man and focusing on the whole defense. So um, definitely some things I need to work on, but I'm glad we got the dub. And at your size, first of all, do you play any other sports or did you, you know, is your background or are you like one of the, when you, when, as a team, when you guys play basketball, do you do that? Like. What is your sports portfolio? I uh, played basketball and track in high school. So, yeah, got that athletic uh, background. Yes, sir. Was it automatic that you were going to play football, or was there a thought of playing something else? Um, it was just how my high school career ended. Um, had no offers for basketball, but was blessed enough to have the talent to play football as well. So, yeah. And what do you think your height, what kind of advantage does it bring at corner? Uh, definitely being able to see more across the field, um, high point in the ball, and uh, just like with my wingspan, also you know, attaching to the receiver as well. So, 
And for both of you, I mean, the defense is pretty much intact from last year, and you guys are kind of the new guys, more or less. Yeah, it, what kind of pressure is there or what kind of excitement is there, either to maintain the standard or to, to join this unit that's had so much success? Um, it's very exciting. Um, I just have a lot of trust in those that were starting last year and the years before, just because they brought us in with, with trust in us as well. So um, we're just trying to keep that standard that they set for us and uh, just playing ball. And to go back to Texas next week as a starter and all that, how cool is that? That's going to be great. Got a lot of family, friends coming out, so it's going to be a great time. And how far from Houston did you grow up? Um, about two two hours. Okay. Yeah. Were the Texans your team or Cowboys? Or? Nah, sorry. I'm not any of those teams. Sorry. <laughs> did you ever go to a game at NRG? Uh, I didn't go to NRG Stadium. I went to uh, AT&T, though, with my dad and my brother, so it was a good experience. A lot of guys are trying to vie for – the ball this year because <laughs> there's a lot of carries to go around after Brad left. What have you done to put yourself in position to to be one of those guys? Um, honestly, I just think all of us have been doing the same thing. Just really good fall camp, and uh, over the summer we've been working really hard. Uh, just drills, um, speed work. So just getting all that work in with the whole team is pretty much all we've been doing. And coach mentioned your speed. Like how? What are we talking about from measurables? I'm not too sure, like the exact um, measurement, but I'm mean, pretty fast in four, 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 five range. So, say so that. And uh, you know, when you got out there today, you did show a burst. Like, mm -hmm. do you feel like what do you feel like your strength is as a runner? Uh, I think definitely my speed is my top priority, uh, top strength, and then also just I'm a hard runner. Um, like to get physical a lot, so not really move too much, but move when I need to. Yeah. If you were to race Zach Larrier, who wins? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't done that yet, but we could probably get that going. <laughs> How did you think he looked today? Oh, he looked great. Yeah, he was uh, real comfortable out there. So it's real exciting to see where he's going to be going. Yeah. Right. And Jared, first career catch goes for 84 yards. That, that had to be pretty cool. Oh, it? yeah. That w it was surreal, to be honest. I mean, that was, that's the type of catch that you only dream of as a kid. And so when it actually happened, it was something else. And w kind of explain to me, when did you know you were going to be in position to get, you know, one reps, be with the starters on offense? Like, was that a throughout the offseason? Was it recently? Uh, I can't really pinpoint a certain time. We just have we have great depth at the position I'm at, and anyone could go, really. We were just battling out the whole fall camp, just making each other better, going at it. And when they called my name, I, I just needed to be ready. Air Force's receivers, you know, there have been some huge numbers, you know, not volume, but at least yards per catch. And, uh, it, you know, when you look at this position, does, is that a prospect that excites you? And then is that kind of what you showed today? Yeah, it definitely does excite me. Looking at all the, the legacy that all the guys left before me, um, it's, I feel like they have really big shoes to fill, but I'm excited about it. Uh, that's why I chose number one three, uh, B. Lou, because I think he's a, someone I really look up to, and I try to model my game after his. You guys, uh, you guys got a pretty good Sam Houston team. It's been good for a lot of years now. Like, how much, how important was it to kind of get yourselves in a rhythm heading into a game like that? Uh, I think it's pretty important. Um, I mean, we've just been working hard the whole season, uh, this whole off season. So, getting ready for next week. You know, we were focusing on week one. So now that that's done, with looking forward to week two and uh, getting that done. Yeah, for sure. Same thing he said. I mean, they're, they're another team on the schedule. We're going to do what we need to do, prepare how we need to prepare, and we're going to go out and do everything that we got.